Good evening, everyone. I'm Susie Garrow. And I'm Bill Griffith in for Tyler Matheson again this evening. Wall Street kicked off the third quarter with a bang today, a record-breaking session that saw the Dow come within a couple of points of 17,000. The blue chip average, the S&P, and the Dow transports all closed at historic highs on the heels of strong manufacturing activity data that we saw both in the U.S. and in China. The rally was led by gains in health care, technology, and consumer discretionary stocks, which had lagged recently. Here's how the major averages ended this day, with the Dow up 129 points, making its biggest one-day point gain since May the 21st. And it came within two points of the 17,000 mark around midday before giving up some of those early gains. The Nasdaq was the strongest of the major averages, up 50 points, reaching a fresh 14-year high. And the S&P was up 13, notching its 23rd record close of the year. So with the Dow at 17,000 now in the crosshairs and the markets at new highs at the midpoint of this year, a lot of traders are now thinking about rejiggering their portfolios, looking to maximize profits ahead of the second half of the year. Dominic Chu has more. Many traders are taking advantage of this halftime to make adjustments to their portfolios. Certain parts of the stock market have fueled the rise, especially in the second half of each year. Since 2009, the best performing second half sector each year has been consumer discretionary. It's been up an average of over 16 percent during the last six months of each year. Part of the reason might be the increased spotlight these stocks get because of the holiday shopping season. It's noteworthy that consumer discretionary stocks are among the biggest laggards in the S&P 500 so far this year. As for the worst performing sector in the second half of the year, over the last five years, it's been utilities, up only an average of 5%. Ironically, utility stocks are the best performers in the S&P 500 so far this year. But knowing the past doesn't always help predict the future. Some experts are looking for profits elsewhere in the market. The energy sector is the sector that I think investors should focus on. First half of the year, it clearly had very low expectations, but the reality of pure performance, the energy sector in the first half of the year is one of the best performing sectors. And it's not always about what you're buying, but also what to avoid. We believe a lot of the sectors that have been pushed higher in the first half of the year by lower interest rates will see subpar returns during the second half of the year. REITs and utilities have done very well, and therefore we would continue to look to underweight those asset classes. After a big run for stocks last year, many traders were looking for fewer gains this time around. But with stocks making fresh record highs and the S&P 500 already up 7% so far this year, reassessing your second half playbook might be the prudent course of action. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Dominic Chu. Joining us now to talk more about this big trading day and your investment strategy, Patricia Edwards, Managing Director of Investment at U U.S. Bank Wealth Management. So, Patty, what a day. I mean, a lot of people tuning in tonight are probably wondering what happened all of a sudden. The stock market has been going up slowly, slowly all year long, and then this big rally, talk of 17,000. I mean, what would you say? What happened? What changed? Well, there's a couple of things. Yeah, fireworks are always nice this week. We like that. But beyond that, it's the beginning of a fresh quarter. So you have a couple of things going on. You've got retirement plans that are making their contributions, either for the month or for the quarter. That starts to push things higher. We have economic data that's coming in that is just a little bit better each time. It's not anything earth-shattering, but it's continuing to build that confidence. And then on top of that, what you saw in the rally is you saw things rally that we have not seen rally over the past quarter. Right. So small caps, things like that. And so you've seen, I think, a lot of the mutual funds that they've got a report as of June mm -hmm. 30th, what they're holding. Now they can rejigger their portfolio for performance and pick up some of the stuff that's lagged. Yes, that was interesting, Patty. I mean, the, the defensive stocks, for the most part, led the way the second quarter. The, you know, those, I don't want to say safe haven plays, but they're cautious plays that pay dividends that people run to when they're not sure growth is going to be all that strong. That wasn't the case today. A lot of those laggards were leaders today. Do you think that's going to be the, the theme for this quarter? Well, the theme for this quarter is really going to be completely data dependent, we think. What we're watching on is the earnings. If the earnings are there, 
then I think you're going to start to see a little bit more growth. You're going to start to see some purchasing, not only in the energy sector, which we like, but also things like manufacturing, because energy costs should be coming down rather than going up with all of the natural gas that we've got coming into the, um, the pools here. So there's a lot of things that could start to go well that will actually drive the entire economy rather than just the stock market. Mm -hmm. Patty, are you concerned that we haven't had a serious correction in a long, long time? I mean, a lot of market strategists say it's healthy to have a correction, and we haven't had one. Should we be concerned about that? You know, it is healthy to have a market correction. On the other hand, it's also healthy to look at where you're trading versus earnings and what kind of performance you've had. So I have a lot of clients who will talk to us and say, geez, you know, we're up 180% or so off of the bottom in 2009. You know, shouldn't we be selling our equities? We look at it, and if you graph the equities versus the um, earnings that those companies have had, we're just barely slightly overvalued. We're a little bit more cautious because we are slightly overvalued, but we're by no means in record territory. And on top of that, you've got companies that have a boatload of cash on their balance sheets. We're back at levels that we haven't seen since the 1960s. And we're going to start to see more dividends paid. We're going to start to see more stock buybacks. And we're going to continue to see mergers and acquisition. We're taking note of the Dow at 17,000. Certainly, it's a, a, a a benchmark that we need to keep an eye on. But, you know, technology stocks, the NASDAQ has had an even better run uh, lately. It was up 6% in the second quarter, where the Dow was up only 2%. Today, it was up 50 points, one and a quarter percent, where the Dow was up one, uh, less than 1%. Do you like technology here? We do like technology. And part of the reason for that is that these companies in the S&P and throughout the market, actually, are going to have to continue to grow their earnings. And part of the way you grow your earnings is you spend on technology, you get greater productivity out of the people that you've got there, and then you start to add headcount. And we think that's actually been going on for a while, but there's more to come. I would like to get your thoughts on what individual investors should do. As you know, a lot of them have been sitting this out. They're sitting on a lot of cash. Um, you know, is it too late to get in at this point? Is it ever too late? Well, frankly, I think for a well-asset allocated portfolio, it's never too late. That being said, I think you need to take into consideration a few things. First of all, in terms of world equity, the U.S. is only 48 percent of world equity. That means that 52 percent of the equities, stocks that trade in this world aren't here. So if you don't have exposure to international, both developed international markets as well as emerging markets, you might want to start to look at that. If you're going to be mm -hmm. trading in the U.S., you might want to start looking more toward the small caps and the, the uh, mid-cap stocks, because if there is going to be M&A, those are going to be the folks that are going to okay. be taken out. Joining the conversation right now is Jonathan Golub. He's chief U.S. market strategist at RBC Capital Markets. Uh, thanks for joining us here, Jonathan. Do do you, do you see this continuing? Is, is this kind of trading that we saw today, this rally, could this be the, set the tone for the third quarter? Or do you, do you see us going into the summer doldrums, as sometimes happens? Well, you know, it, it, a, a day where the market's up between uh, a half and one percent, you want to be careful to uh, not project that that's what we're going to see. But I think that we're going to see a continued very strong run in the markets, very similar to what we've had in the last several months. And the, the key is a lot of this is driven by better economic news and, uh, and corporate profits. And, and what about what Patty was talking about, IPOs and M&A? Do you see that theme continuing? And we've got this big IPO. Everybody's talking about Alibaba. Is that going to feed the momentum? No, I mean, at, at the end of the day, IPOs are, are not going to be the thing that drives uh, the market. And, and some of the M&A that you've seen is actually not driven by, a, you know, corporate excitement about the economy as much as them moving some of their businesses offshore and doing things to uh, enhance their earnings um, by, by cutting some of these tax burdens. But um, the reality is, is that we have a, an economy which is on solid footing. It's getting better. And that really is the fuel uh, for the market. All right. Terrific. Jonathan, thank you so much. Jonathan Golub from RBC Capital Markets and Patricia Edwards with U.S. Bank Wealth Management. Thanks to both of you.